doing the second video here, the uh, Garibaldi Volcanic Belt, Pemberton Ice Field here. So we're driving parallel with the Pemberton Ice Field right now. Now, if you look at the top of those mountains, you'll see piles and piles and piles of 30, 40, 50, 60 feet of snow there. So those are the glaciers. That's the, when I say Pemberton Ice Field, we have a continuous mountain range in the Coast Mountains. The Coast Mountain Range in British Columbia gets some of the heaviest rainfall in North America. And so in the winter time at high elevations, this rainfall translates to snow. So you have a bunch of valleys like we're driving through now, but higher up that have been filled in with snow. And these valleys join together to form an ice cap as it's known, because it's less than 50,000 square kilometers. It accretes up top. And then the, the weight and pressure of the glacier causes it to push. Pemberton ice sheet is a source of subglacial volcanism. It's a triangular shape source of the Squamish River. And basically all that's happening with it is it's, it's a chunk of the coast mountains near Pemberton that has really high elevation, is prone to snowfall, and the snow freezes and collects together. And so all an ice field is is a bunch of valley glaciers. So you have a bunch of valleys like we're driving through now, but higher up, that have been filled in with snow. And these valleys join together to form an ice field, or an ice cap as it's known. It accretes up top and then the weight and pressure of the glacier causes it to push down the mountain. The Pemberton Ice Sheet is a source of subglacial volcanism because the Mount Cayley Volcanic Field, which we're also passing through, uh, we drove past a bunch of volcanoes, that has had, like Brandywine Falls, for example, is lava flow that came subglacial eruption. And Brandywine Falls, the actual waterfall that is Brandywine Falls, that is like in Wells Gray, it's just eroded lava solid lava and um, the Mount Cayley volcanic, volcanic field another volcanic field it's basically if you're looking at the highway the way we are now the Mount Cayley field is on the west side and the Garibaldi volcanic field is on the east side Garibaldi mountain basically in the surrounding area and in these volcanic fields there's cinder cones which are those vents that poof out once strata volcanoes which are from the subduction of the plate there's shield volcanoes which are anytime there's a kind of a rifting, like a crustal rifting or a fissure, and the lava doesn't have a lot of pressure in it. Like it's usually the more viscous lava is, the less gas will be trapped in it. And the more viscous it is, the more gas that gets trapped, which is why strata volcanoes are very explosive because their lava is typically very thick. And um, so that's why when it erupts underneath the ice, like Mount Garibaldi, it can be very, very problematic for numerous, numerous reasons. But it forms some pretty cool stuff. The reason you don't have glaciers down in Ontario and stuff, even in the Canadian Shield, is because you don't have the elevation. You need thousands of feet of elevation. You don't have the insulation, which is basically like, depending on where the sun's at, if there's a big shadow shielding most of the glacier from one of the mountain peaks, then the ice won't be won't get as much exposure to the sun, which means it won't melt as fast. Whereas you just have a big pile of snow on the, on the prairies or on, out east there's much more surface area the snow is exposed, which means it can melt much faster. But in the mountains, it's just the top of the, the top surface of the snow is exposed. And then everything else below it is cradled by the mountain valleys and insulated, right? So you have that. And then also the fact that we live in a rainforest and that the coast mountain range and in North America, which helps create the ice sheet. We're in the middle of the Garibaldi volcanic belt. So I said, Squamish volcanic field is at the bottom. The Mount Cayley and Garibaldi Lake volcanic fields are kind of where we are now, right in the middle. And then once we get to Pemberton and we pass Pemberton, we are going to have the Garibaldi volcanic belt, which is the Bridge River Cones and Mount Meager, the Mount Meager volcanic complex. We're starting to come into Pemberton here and we're going to head over to Mount Meager because Mount Meager at the northern end of the Garibaldi volcanic belt here is, is cool and it's definitely its own thing and it deserves, deserves some recognition. Alrighty, so we're just sitting there in Falls here. Go over to the billboard, check it out. You can see we got snow on the ground. Good old snow, everybody likes to go snow. So we're gonna go see if we can maybe see the falls. At least go up to the fence, because it, it's open, which is good. It'd do us much good if it's closed. Okay. 
Naren Falls, a uh, mix of Douglas fir, western red cedar, hemlock, paper, birch. Okay, these are the trees. So what does it say here? Naren Falls is a place of cultural history as well as great national beauty. Yeah, it's similar to Wells Gray. Same kind of vibe. I hear water. Oh, okay. Into the valley. Will that be a nice fall down the mountain, eh? Oh, you walk along the gorge. I see. If you look forward, you see that massive, like with the big snow cap on top of the massive, just a bunch of mountains together, basically combined together. That's Mount Meager. It's the second highest one, and it's the Mount Meager volcanic complex. So remember how I was saying you have compound volcanoes with like mountains and stuff? So there's the strata volcano, and then there's little vents and lava domes and fissures and stuff, right? Coming off Mount Meager. So Mount Meager is a volcanic complex, not a volcanic field, volcanic complex, and then to the north, more over in the Lillooet area, is the Bridge River Cones. And those are a bunch of cinder cones that erupted uh, thousands of years ago. But they're in their own designation. They're clumped in, but... So this is the Mount Meager Volcanic Complex, and this is basically the end of the Garibaldi Volcanic Belt, the northern part. It continues on into the central coast, but there's no roads and very little access. We're coming to the end here, Mount Meager. It's kind of the finish line for the Garibaldi Volcanic Belt. So we started this morning the Wild's Volcanic Center, subglacial volcanism, which you can see all the snow on top of Mount Meager. If that erupts and melts all that snow, all of that water is coming down the mountains, gonna wash this whole valley out, destroy all these farms. Harrison is at risk, obviously for Mount Meager, as well as Squamish for various other reasons. And then you have the lower quadrant, which is Squamish volcanic field. You have the middle quadrant, Mount, Mount Cayley and Garibaldi Lake volcanic field. And then you have the top end of it, the northern part, which is the Mount Meager Volcanic Complex and the Bridge River Cones. And that's basically the Garibaldi Volcanic Belt within the Cascade Volcanic Arc. And the Cascade Volcanic Arc exists because, like I was saying, there's a big subduction zone all along the Pacific Coast. They call it the Cascadia Subduction Zone. And that subducting plate is what causes all this volcanism. And obviously, like I said, continental rifting and fissures and stuff are for the shield volcanoes, but there's not really many shield volcanoes here. There are stratovolcanoes, subduction, that's a stratovolcano, Mount Meager, you see all the snow on top of it. Just imagine you live in this farm here. Imagine if that melted and all that water came rushing down the valley towards your house. So the likelihood that it'll ever happen in our lifetime that we're going to have to worry about is, I don't, I assume it's astronomically small. You'd have to talk to a geologist about that. So the Watts Point Volcanic Center. Now, it's not a volcanic center as in a visitor center or a information center where they tell you about volcanoes. What it is is a volcanic, it's the center of that volcanic feature, the Watts Point. And it's basically what it is, is it's a subglacial mound, which is a type of subglacial eruption, volcanic eruption. So you have a few different types of subglacial eruptions. You have two years. There's a really famous mountain called Table Mountain near Squamish. Two years are a BC feature because, like I said, subglacial volcanism is unique to Iceland, Canada, Alaska, and Antarctica. So, unless you're going to Iceland or Antarctica, the only other places you're going to see it is out here and up in Alaska. The two main types that we're going to talk about are two years, which is, like I said, it basically looks like a big tabletop when the lava erupts. It burns like a column in the snow or in the ice, and then the lava fills up through that column, but it, the ice being thick enough cools the lava, so then it solidifies, it becomes flush with the top of the ice, and then it solidifies and it looks like a table, like flat tops, a uh, tabletop. So the, it's, the one in near Squamish is called Table Mountain, or Whistler side is called Table Mountain, and uh, it's a Tuya. Now Watts Point is a subglacial mound, and a subglacial mound is basically like a shield volcano, so it has really low profile 
sides, so less, less than 15 degrees. It's just it's basically like a hump. And that's when it erupted underneath the ice, but didn't burn all the way through. So then the ice underneath acts like a cast, like a casting or a form. And basically the lava cools into like kind of a mound shape. So they call those subglacial mounds. Watts Point was a subglacial mound. It's an outcrop of rock. So you drive around this big uh, switchback, which we just drove through with a bunch of traffic. And it goes down a little bit, but, and there's the railway goes through it and stuff. But it's just, it's just basically a, a prime example of subglacial volcanism. So some, so a volcano erupted and then Watts Point subglacial mound was the byproduct of it. And then same thing with Table Mountain as well. And then the ice marginal lava flow of the lava dam, which is damming Garibaldi Lake. So that's kind of from the subglacial aspect of things. It's in it, all it really is, is just when a volcano erupts under ice, that's it. But usually it's a glacier. That's why they call it subglacial. But it's a very rare type of volcanism because you need ice and volcanoes and you gotta have them together. And it's kind of a weird match. So like I said, typically the only places that have it is Antarctica, Iceland, Western Canada, and Alaska. Everybody else is out of luck. You gotta come over here and see it. The whole point of this is to show you prime examples of subglacial volcanism. One being what it looks like when it erupted flush with the surface of the ice, and one being when it erupted underneath. And then one being where it contacted the ice and basically formed a wall. I wouldn't worry about Squamish or any of the surrounding areas. The likelihood that any of this stuff is actually gonna blow up cause any problems for us is probably not something us or you know 10 generations of our progeny will have to worry about but it is just kind of a food for thought thing and something to note the prospect of it is, is truly terrifying and i'll just leave you with one more thought when mount st helens erupted there was a guy <clears throat> i think he was either near the volcano or on the volcano and you know rest in peace buddy nobody ever found a trace of him but the day that mount st helens went off he was on top of the volcano or near the volcano and they obviously never found anything. He was working, studying as a volcanologist, he was studying the volcano and he would never be around to tell anybody about it. He would, you know, you'd see it for a split second. It's not a bad way to go with a volcano being vaporized by a volcano. It's like, I just imagine, you know, you're at Mount Meager, you're, you know, where we were. You see Mount Meager explode. And then you see that pyroclastic ash flow coming at three, 400 kilometers, a couple thousand degrees. And it's like, you know, I'll leave you with that thought. Paint a nice picture for you to go to sleep tonight. That's going to be it for me, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified. And Sasquatch Prospector out.